Hey everyone, this is Caroline Corey. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, we are broadcasting on my YouTube channel and several Facebook pages. So wherever you are, uh, we are getting your comments, your questions, your suggestions. So thanks so much for joining me today. We are living in such a weird time <laughs> on planet Earth. It's absolutely insane at the same time i uh, i feel like this is a, a massive massive uh, consciousness awakening moment it's an opportunity for all of you who have been working on awakening your spirituality how to move to the next level i feel that uh the events that are happening on earth today are challenging i don't know i don't know if i like the word challenging but kind of bringing up um, all these opportunity, the things that you now can do to maneuver, to navigate this uh, earthly reality. So I just want to say very briefly, I will do another webcast specifically on those issues. But just for now, um, for those who seem to be concerned or frustrated or confused about what's happening, especially in our country, uh, in the United States with the elections, and there's all kinds of fears coming up and confusion, I will do a separate uh, webcast down the road, maybe next week, we will see, we will announce it. But I just want to say that regardless of what happens, um, you know, I feel like don't focus too much on those particular events, because as you focus on the bigger picture, the, the divine plan, if you will, you know, the bird's eye view, you will realize that it's really not going to affect the way you are creating your reality. And um, if, you, if you just keep that focus, you will be fine. You will continue uh, creating your reality, um, you know, that, that works for you. So I just wanna give this little word of encouragement because I get all these uh, emails and, and uh, you know, uh, telling me what's gonna happen, what do I do and things like that. So just a word of encouragement, just keep focus on strengthening your consciousness and uh, believing in yourself. And you're not alone, we're all in this together. So you have support, there's thousands and millions of people around the world now who uh, get it at that level. And so just know that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so uh, again, the subject, the, the, for me, the focus right now is uh, the film that just was just launched three months ago, four months ago. It's actually doing very well. Superhuman, the invisible made visible. It's available everywhere. For those who are just joining, it's available. Just go to superhumanfilm.com and you'll find all the platforms. So we're doing very well. I'm very excited that a lot of people who didn't even know me or this work are finding it, you know? So it's, it's very, very cool. But we need more than ever before your support and your uh, intention to help with continuing this progress and this kind of spreading the information worldwide because the film is about the power of your consciousness, the power of your mind over your physical reality. I mean, this is how you create your reality. So you know, obviously, we can't be looking for solutions outside yourself, ourselves. And so that's why I feel this film is so, so timely. It's uh, really, it's, it's not just talk, you know, uh, it is a demonstration, it is evidence that your mind does have a measurable effect on physical reality. And that is how you are creating. This is how you're changing the time space continuum. That's how your, the frequency of your thoughts is actually manipulating and moving the timelines. And it's all in the film, you guys. So if you haven't watched it, make sure you go right now, superhumanfilm.com, watch it. If you have watched it, you probably wanna watch it again or at least share it with your friends. But more importantly also, I would love it if you guys can um, support this effort. And like, for example, what you can do is um, 
go to Amazon and leave a, a, a review because that's how we're attracting new people. They're finding uh, these reviews and going, oh, this sounds interesting. I'm going to check it out. And so I'm getting a lot of people I've never heard of before and uh, who have never heard of me uh, this way. So I would appreciate it if you can do that. It takes two seconds of your time. We're doing all of this, you know, um, for free for you. Um, and so I would love that sort of support. Or if you are connected to a, a network, a, a large network or any network, you know, that would help us again, continue um, spreading this important information, please get in contact with me. I would so appreciate it. Okay. And of course, uh, the topic, like I said, is mind over matter. How do we strengthen the, um, our, our ability to create, to have this measurable effect? So for, I've been talking about this, but for those who don't know, I have been in this field for my whole life, but more recently, and when I say more recently, I'm talking like four years ago. Four years ago, I started working with different scientists because I was getting validation. The people I work with were getting validation over validation over validation that when we do energy healing session or when we do any sort of remote viewing, it gets validated the next day we have test results or the next day we have confirmation of what we just saw. So, so because of uh, having this validation all these years, I was confident that I could um, work with scientists and see if we can make this measurable, like literally look on a machine and see the measurement of how this intention, the, the consciousness that we projected in an energy session or, or a remote viewing or telekinesis, whatever, could actually be seen by everyone. It's not in my head. It's not in, you know, the person's head. It, it is real. And so uh, one of the first scientists that I started working with, and I did all kinds of experiments, but one of the first ones uh, was um, an amazing guy. Um, his name is Glenn Ryan. He is a quantum biologist and his background is incredible. But what I really liked about him is that he worked with DNA. I was looking for different types of scientists who worked with different types of things, biological systems, um, or, you know, machines or whatever. And so, so I was very intrigued because the bottom line, and also he works with water. I'm going to let him, uh, describe all of this. And I'm going to, we're going to go through all the stuff we did, what he discovered, what we've discovered together. And, um, and so, because the bottom line is we're made of water were made of DNA. And so, so I remember, um, the very, very first time we did the experiment, I had never done it before. He had never done it before. That was for my previous film, uh, for those who have seen it. Um, so that was four years ago, I want to say. I can't believe time flies. And so I told him, what if the idea was we are connected with the higher consciousness, we are connected with non-physical, non-visible beings and entities. We know it's real. Is there any way to measure that? And so he said, I've never done this before. I said, I've never done this before. <laughs> Let's just try it. And so we, uh, we, we did it through water at the time, no, through DNA actually. And basically what I did in that film was I tried to communicate uh, with you know, my higher consciousness first, but also with this intelligence that I tap, um, that I tap into. So for me, it was very easy. Uh, but the idea is, can we see anything on the screen through these machines? And, uh, and the very first time, uh, the effect was, you know, shot up like 400%. And I remember his face, <laughs> it was like, what? What just happened here? Let's measure it again, let's measure it again. Of course, and when we do um, an experiment scientifically, uh, we do several measurement. We don't just do it once and then, uh, so just to kind of validate that this was an effect. Anyway, I had a blast and that got us started on a series of experiments that we did together with DNA, with water, in person, long distance. And so it's just so fun um, to do this with this caliber 
uh, scientists and, and people. And of course, Glenn is my very, very dear friend right now um, at this point. And so I'm gonna bring him on. I'm gonna start stop talking and bring him on. And hello, my dear friend, how are you? Hi, good to see you again, even though we're 3000 miles apart. Yeah. Uh, I always, I always like, I mean, of course I've known you now for a while, but, uh, you, you, do people tell you that you look like, uh, Einstein? Yeah. Even happened. Uh, where I, did, I was in the, uh, gym and my, I, my hair was wet and I had a towel wrapped around me and this little kid waddles up to me and he looks up and he says, Einstein. And then he waddles away. <laughs> That's so funny. Information from the universe. Yeah, right. Uh, you you look at you, uh, and then when we talk about science stuff, it's just we have these dynamic uh, conversations. Um, and uh, I do ask you very, very challenging questions. Uh, but, but for the people who don't know you, who don't know your background, tell us a little bit. You're a quantum biologist, but you also uh, were um, in, at Harvard. Uh, can you briefly tell us your background and how you got to where you are today? Sure, absolutely. So uh, I started out in traditional biomedical research. I got a PhD from the University of London. And then I left standard biochemistry when I discovered that energy can heal the body. Why work with pharmaceuticals and drugs and chemicals a a as a healing modality when you can work with energy? So I got involved with a bioelectromagnetics community. It was studying the effects of electromagnetic fields on the body to heal the body. Uh, and then I moved on from conventional energies to unconventional energies and started working with healers and started working uh, with very unconventional sources and types of energies, uh, including a lot of work I did with healers. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so, so cool. So I love it when I hear about uh, scientists and, you know, in the, in the field of science who started out kind of in mainstream science and kind of transition. Um, so, but what, so I want to talk about water because I know that's what you're working on, what you have been working on the last few years. Why water? And what is the difference between the different types of water? You and I talked about this when we wanted to do experiments with water. Um, what is structured water and why, like, what is the difference? And people think just, just drink you know, remote, remote uh, reverse osmosis cleaned up water and you're fine. But what is the difference between the different types of water? Uh, okay, how much time we have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a mouthful. Uh, but oh, well, I'll see if I can condense it. But uh, as usual, you guys have to understand, Caroline asks these amazing questions. She goes very deep in her in her questions. And it's a real pleasure talking to her because most people don't want to go down the rabbit hole as deeply as her. So now we have a chance. Hopefully you want to join us as we go down the rabbit hole of science and spirituality. Uh, and the question uh, is about water. Well, I mean, obviously we know we're all composed of water, but what's I interesting about water is the fact that it carries information mm -hmm. and the fact that it has really unusual properties and there's water and there's different kinds of water water has quantum properties uh water water is surrounds every molecule and every cell in our body so if there's going to be any communication from the outside in it's going to go through the water immediately around the cell and the water that is immediately around the cell right really close to it uh, and all biomolecules is a special kind of water which they call interferential. They, it's got so many different names, but nowadays we call it structured water because it's not amorphous like bulk water is. It clusters and forms little, you know, um, structural uh, units that have a three-dimensional structure. And the most interesting one is the hexagon uh, or the honeycomb, actually. And um, so structured water is very important for um cell the function of every cell and every and every molecule but i'm particularly interested in in um water as a memory uh, the, the memory of water and water as a carrier of information 
mm. because you know the theme of this uh, of this uh, film is about consciousness and the mind and the invisible. Well, you're talking you know, so here you're talking about energy and not matter. Right? You know the body has an energy body as well as a physical body uh, and a chemical body for that matter. Uh, so when you're talking about the mind, mind over matter, uh, scientists have no clue really what the mind is. Uh, but wait, I want to interrupt you because I want to, I mean, it's like just what you just said, you okay. know, and by the way, this audience gets it. I mean, wants to get it. it. We're all interested in understanding the mechanics of consciousness and how it all works. I, I'm stopping you because of just a couple of things that you said that are mind blowing. One, that water is not just a conductor, but it has a structure uh, that the, and the water that's in our body has a specific structure, which is hexagonal. To me, this is a huge, um, uh, because to me, this has to do with um, golden ratios and it has to do with um, intelligent design. It has to do with how it fits and it's coherent with other structures um, of the energy field of the earth properties um, and, and the space around us and the cosmos and blah, 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 so on and so forth. So that's the reason why, how do you, why do you think the water has this hexagonal shape and how significant is it to you? I just said how significant it is to me in a nutshell, but does it make sense to you? And why, why does it have that structure? Why isn't it not like cubic or something? Okay, well, actually, it, it, it's not only hexagonal. Uh, it, it's not cubic, but it does have several different forms depending on how many water molecules cluster together. I mean, water molecules are like people. They don't hang out individually, you know, one here, one there, you know, one here, one there. They hang out with each other. They cluster. So they can, they, they could be, they cluster in twos and threes and fours and fives and sixes and hundreds. In fact, even thousands. Uh, that's a community. That's like a you know, global community. So the analogy between humans and, and water molecules is interesting. And water molecules are connected by, via a thing called the hydrogen bond. It's not mm. a chemical bond like inside of a molecule. Uh, well, it does happen inside, but it's not a covalent chemical bond. It's, a, it's more like an energy bond. It's an electromagnetic energy bond between the positive and negative charges of oxygen and hydrogen. So it's kind of a, like it's technically called an electrostatic um, energy field. And the hydrogen bond is actually a very fascinating kind of bond in nature because electrons go back and forth between the, the, uh, the oxygen and the hydrogen. Well, these electrons are capable of quantum tunneling. And this has actually been measured. So the hydrogen bond that, that holds molecules like DNA, we're talking about before, holds the two strands together. Uh, a hydrogen bond is, is, exhibits quantum property. So I measure on anything to do with a hydrogen bond, of which in, case, in, in this case, clustered water. In the previous case, the, the rewinding and unwinding of DNA. It's all about the hydrogen bonds. This is a quantum event. So we're influencing, if we can influence this with our mind, then we're resonating with a with the quantum level of our body, and that makes the most sense because the mind, since I, as I to elaborate on what I said earlier, scientists don't know what it is, but people who are into uh, into energy realize that consciousness is a form of energy, and then there are many different types of energy, and there are many different types of structured water. So if you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, I do. We do. <laughs> That's a short answer. I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you know what what what's happening is as you're talking, you're creating this picture of how everything fits together. Um, so that's why, I, you know, even though you're talking, you know, quantum description and quantum properties, and a lot of people kind of get it and kind of understand, but but uh, but it's still kind of relatable in the sense that you're talking about, um, you know, how energy affects the water basically our molecular structure at a quantum level and so that's fascinating because if my mind can 
uh, affects the water in my body at a quantum level, what can it do with it? Well, the advantage of working at the quantum level is because it is the most fundamental level. There's the quantum level, then there's the um, un, uh, energetic level, and then there's the chemical level. Let's just, I mean, let's bring it down to three simple ones, the physical. Wait, did you say quantum before energetic? Uh, yeah, quantum is more fundamental. I mean, it's a kind of energy, but when I say energetic, I mean like electromagnetic energy. And oh, okay, okay. Energy that, of the nervous system, which predominates the whole body. Right. And there's the physical body, the organs and the brain. So uh, we have to work at all three levels to heal the body. You, you, in principle, you need to work at all three levels, unless you're a Mormon. And they think if you just intervene at the spiritual level, it all filters down uh, the, the, the spiritual, the uh, quantum level, then it all filters down from there or, mm -hmm. or up, depending on how you look at it. But the point is that, that it's, it's our mind and our intention that, that resonates at the quantum level. Energy devices like heal, energy healing, pulse electromagnetic fields, they resonate at the chemical level and uh, herbs and drugs resonate at the physical level. Those are the three levels of healing. I personally think you need to do all three at the same time. Yeah. So, or maybe one could trigger the other. I mean, yeah, the way not, yeah, maybe, maybe we don't know. Uh, I feel like, uh, for example, when we work with energy healing and we are addressing the energetic property of the water or the body for that matter then i feel the chemistry follows it's almost like you speaking of structure i feel i have one methodology that i wear um in my energy medicine um uh, methodology i work with geometry and by changing by reshaping the geometry of the cell it starts to rotate in a specific way it creates, it goes back to its original shape, therefore its original structure. And so that's why I feel structure is extremely relevant and important in healing. Um, so does that make sense, Glenn? Well, yeah, let me elaborate on that because, uh, yeah, uh, you're totally right. You seem to be tuned in uh, to some higher source of information because everything that comes out of your mouth is, is not <laughs> only perfect and correct, but it's like, Sometimes it's very new and original. So I'm, you know, but that, but actually what you just said was exactly what we, we I've done in the past. We didn't do that. We, we measured a different property of DNA, but um, the getting back to its original shape in this case is the helix because that's the geometric shape of the DNA molecule. Uh, it, it exists. The helix, the helix you're saying? The helix. The helix. Or, okay. Okay. The helix. Well, okay. It also exists as a Taurus, it has many different shapes, but in this particular experiment, I was interested in double stranded DNA, which has two, two strands to, together make a helix. So what I did was I, I unwound the two strands partially, and then they had the option of either going back to its original shape or unwinding even further. And then I gave it to healers. And it turns out that most healers, um, uh, that, well, so what I is, it, it can change the uh, rewinding process, but that there are two kinds of healers, uh, ones that speed it up and ones that slow it down. Mm. So, but you're talking about DNA and the two strands and that, you know, it's still water is part of that. But uh, I want to talk about this in a second because the two strand DNA, how uh, we, we, the experiment that you and I did, Right. Realize that when you raise the electrical conductivity going through the DNA, it changes shape from the two strand to this torus like. So, which is fascinating. Going back to structure. So, so if we, if you don't mind finishing off on that thought, so could we say that the water in our body is fundamentally are supposed to have a specific structure? And then when we are sick or we are off balance, it's because the water in our body is becoming incoherent and unstructured. Would you agree? Okay, there, now you introduce a great concept, uh, coherence. Yes. When these water molecules cluster together in little groups or big groups, 
they, they, as I said, they communicate with each other through the hydrogen bond. And because that's a quantum event, they can communicate throughout the entire cluster at the quantum level, which means simultaneously and coherently. Yes. And the more uh, coherent, the more uh, sensitive it is to uh, information from outside. So when, when you, I did, we, we didn't measure the degree of coherence, uh, but, uh, but what we measured was the, um, the, uh, well, in the case of the water, I uh, said, so, mind. Okay. Well, that's another whole uh, <laughs> experiment. Sorry. So the street, you're asking about the structure of water and the structure of water, you know, exists. And, uh, yes, it allows for, um, communication between the individual components, but because there's water throughout the entire body, it, this it means that the entire body can communicate at the quantum level and that that all of the individual components of particular interest is your head and your heart can communicate with each other um, instantaneously and and back and forth both ways. So uh, this is a you know, key for the understanding of health. Uh, we we're talking about healers, but now you want to focus on health. The more coherent your body, the more in tune you are not only with it, with yourself, but with the universe uh, and the healthier you are. So yes, that's a very profound thing. And what happens when we get old is the, we lose the structure. We lose the hexagonal structure. That's what I, that's what I've been saying. Go that's ahead. What you're trying to say, right. And the best way to, to, to do that is to drink hexagonal water. And, you know, there are, some structured waters, like the company I work with, uh, Vivo, wh which sells structured water, that is structured water and been ve scientifically verified, but most of the water out there that says structured is not structured. So, uh, it, or was structured when it started because the structure doesn't last very long. Uh, so that's part of the problem. But if you can get real fresh structured water in nature, uh, go to a fresh river uh, where the water is flowing through in a stream and uh, it, nature structures water. But the problem is that so that kind of water is often contaminated since we, we pollute the uh, environment so horribly. Uh, so structured water um, is what you got to drink. So, you know, just kind of a recap. So what we're saying is that the it is um the fundamental nature of water is for in the body is for it to be structured when it's structured you are in balance your organs are in balance and you are healed i mean you you are healthy let's say right. because because also when everything is structured it becomes like we said all coherent and the communication uh from one cell to another throughout the body is fluid there's a flow, which what we which is what we need. Uh, for example, if if the brain is not sending this information through my peripheral nervous system and my peripheral nervous system to my organs, well, the organs are starving for that information. So the cells within the organ eventually is going to say, okay, I'm not getting information. I'm not getting the, the structure I'm supposed to have. And eventually with time, I feel we break down because of that. So the fundamental structure nature um, of water is, is what we're talking about here and how I call it, I don't know if it's, if we can use the word entrainment in this case, but if you are, if you're the body in your water is all over the place and it's not chaotic and I drink uh, structured water, are my water molecule inside my body going to be entrained to this structured water spontaneously? Or is this a different process? <laughs> well, I wouldn't use the word entrainment because uh, uh, entrainment here, but but the, the concept is uh, is there. I mean, because entrainment implies one. Well, it, it, well, it could be, uh, but uh, that's it. yeah. It implies that one system is influencing another system, exactly, and, and and making it better, more coherent. And and that's well, that's one way that it works. I mean, uh, it, it takes three weeks to to flush your body out of all the unstructured water when you drink structured mm -hmm. water. 
Okay. So, so it's a it's a it's probably a combination of both. You have to physically flood the system with structured water, and then what happens is the unstructured water is reminded, oh, this is the structure I'm supposed to be. Right. Let let me go back to my original form, as you said earlier, a hexagon or a pentagon or whatever it is. Uh, and hexagon is the healthiest, but um, there's not that much research done on the biological effects and the functionality of the clusters, whether they're two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, but <clears throat> yes, um, one, the there is communication between the structured water that you drink and energetic communication. Right. The rest of the water and that rest of the water then is informed about how it should be. Yeah. And uh, so let's get into the topic then, uh, not just structure and shape and geometry, but also uh, the, the property itself. So we in our in one of the movie, the, the la last movie, Superhuman, we did an experiment. You and I worked on that. Also, we worked on the pH. Right. So. Uh, I'm assuming, and you can tell me, that when the water in the body is perfectly structured, it will uh, structured, it will naturally have a balanced pH, which is usually between 6.8, 7.2, depending on the organ or whatever. Uh, do you agree that the pH is part of, you know, the balance of the pH is also um is also part of it being straight in other words is is that if you change the structure the ph goes off you know all over the, the place and no, not, not really there's no okay, correlation between the structure and the ph can you explain yeah there are two different things the, the structure is the physical structure okay uh, but the ph is is a measure of the amount of hydrogen ions <clears throat> in the water that's right. what you that's what you're you're actually measuring the amount of hydrogen ions now hydrogen ions uh can be uh, what struck water can structure around a hydrogen ion or or any other uh core thing that 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 it can it can grab onto and and cluster around so when water clusters around a proton uh, it's a certain kind of clustering. It's not a hexagonal clustering. It's a whole different kind of clustering of which there are many different types of clustering. And unfortunately, the scientists can measure them, but they have no idea of what the function is. Uh, so uh, hydrogen structured water is, um, uh, is may, may have a different pH, but that's never been uh, shown in the scientific community. So we got two different things here. What we did was to measure the pH. Right. Why do we, we measure the pH? Well, the pH, it, it, as you said, has, is in a normal range and it's supposed to be, and the body regulates that all the time. So, uh, I mean, we didn't measure the, your ability to set, to regulate. There's a part of the brain that regulates the, the, the uh, acidity in, uh, in, in the environment, in the body. We didn't actually measure that, but by measuring it at the molecular level, because we're working with just water. So you're measuring <clears throat> the, um, the pH. So if you can change that with your mind, the, the, the point is not, I mean, well, okay. So let's rephrase that. So if, if, you, if you can do that with water that's in front of you, right. in, 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 a, in, a, in a container, then right. you can do the same thing with the water that's in your body. Right. But, yeah, but and so change it and change the pH. So if it gets too high, you could lower it. If it gets too low, you can raise it. Yeah. So so I, I'm going to show a clip of how we did that. Oh. Uh, you know, in the movie. But I personally think, and you know, that's my own scientific. You know, is that everything is connected. So, and I know this from working, like I said, through energy medicine. So if I'm working with a hydro with the pH, I'm working on a chemical level. Right, I'm affecting you know the, the hydrogen molecules, and I'm changing that property, which if I you know will will kind of lead to a restructuring of the 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 cell, that because it's all connected, or or 
if I work on the restructuring of the cell, does that not rebalance um, the pH of the water automatically? Because it's all connected. Because that, for example, let me tell you, like when I, what I'm working, like if I'm working with someone and I'm working on an organ, right? I see the cells. So I can do several things. I can change the rotation cycle, meaning its frequency. I can change its structure. It's kind of like all over the place. But then when it goes back to its structure, it seems to be balanced. I can work on the chemistry. There's all kinds of stuff in there that I take out. There's all kinds of, you know. So, but my point is, so there's different components, but when you work on one balancing one, eventually it starts to affect the other. Oh. That's my theory. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a reasonable hypothesis. You, you, again, as usual, you're thinking, way beyond the way most scientists do. They don't even know the relationship between the pH and the structure, structured water, other than what I said. Yeah. Uh, and, and all the components are related because water is a quantum system exactly. and water communicates at the quantum level. And when you treat water, my dear, you're, you're working at the quantum level and the electromagnetic and the chemical, I believe. Exactly. But so we only measured one. Yeah, we did, but but I mean, but but yeah, I mean, this is, it's a theory, but that's kind of how I, like I said, doing through work, I can see how you work with one or the other to affect the other components and properties. But uh, yeah. But the main point of the experiment that we did that people should understand before you show the clip is that Caroline could make the the pH either go up or down depending on her intention. Correct. Depending on what she did in her mind to control the energy coming out of her body to influence the water. Right. My theory about what's going on. Uh, and if she can do that uh, with her mind, th th then that, that is an amazing property of the mind that not only can you manifest things in the physical world, but that with the slightest uh, 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 twist of fate, as Dylan would say, or twist of mind, you can make it go in the opposite direction. And it's exactly. Very, very exactly. And so, so sometimes like when I uh, work on it myself or with other people and I say, well, you know, rate, you know, if you increase the hydrogen molecules, the pH goes down or if you, you know, so, and that's what I focused on. But, but for a lot of people, like it's hard to figure out like what is hydrogen? Like, you know, it's too technical or whatever. And so there's different ways. They just put their intention. I want the pH to go up or down without really worrying about how it gets there. So I want to show the clip and the way I did it this particular time. And, uh, and then we can, you know, work because we're, why we're having, why are we having this discussion? We're having this discussion to encourage people to do this for themselves. I mean, that's the point. And to empower people to know that, that they can do it. Exactly. So, so let's show this clip real quick, and then uh, we will discuss how it was done and how people can do it. On five separate occasions, I measured the pH over a course of an hour and it doesn't change more than the very last segment. That's a hundredth of a unit, a pH unit. If you can change a tenth of a unit, that would be a very profound change. My intent was to lower the pH in the water. I visualized that my mind was connected to the hydrogen molecules in the water and getting them to multiply. More hydrogen molecules means a lower pH. So we've started at 757. 757. And I dropped it to 747. That's a whole uh, unit. That's a large effect. The fact that you can change this particular parameter, the acid alkaline balance in water implies that you can change it in the body.
So you saw it. You all saw it. So um, uh, just for you to know that, you know, with doing these experiments over and over and over, I had to find my way. Like, do I focus on the hydrogen molecules? Do I just focus on an intention and hope for the best? Uh, what do I focus on? And so I found for me, being very, very precise uh, is to work at the hydrogen molecule level and, get, you know, visualizing and telling them, uh, multiply, multiply, so the pH can go down. Yeah, so so this is, it's worth mentioning to the audience here that what Caroline's talking about is a, a whole branch of, of alternative medicine, if you will, called imagery, mm. uh, where, where psychologists mostly use visual imagery and guided imagery so that you can go in your mind, you can bring your consciousness to the hydrogen atom specifically yeah. or to yeah. a particular molecule or to yeah. a particular cell yeah and we've done a lot of work with cancer cells as an example where people can visualize and imagine uh you know these little um pack rats you know nibbling nibbling away at the here's their here's their cancer these little uh you know uh <laughs> nanobites or whatever nibbling away at their cancer it it's a specific image and back to what you said earlier, it seems the more specific the image, the better. Yeah, you could yeah. just say, I want the pH to go up and I want, or I want it to go down. But, but the more specific the image, uh, it seems the more powerful an effect that you can produce. Exactly. But to me, it's, it's uh, two things. I mean, the way I do it anyway, people can try different techniques. So I have the image and also I've kind of, I can see like the subtle energy. So I can literally see the hydrogen molecule in the water. Like I can see that, uh, but I can also feel it. And I, I feel like I'm connected to it. So that as if it's like an extension of me, and so as I am shifting my energy and like projecting an intention, it kind of responds because it's as if it were me. You know what I mean? Like if I, if I want to move my hand, I can just move my hand because it's me telling my hand. But if my hand is also the water, it, you know, so it's not just imagery. I feel like the energy that is circulating from my body gets transferred so it's on several levels not just imagery Does that makes sense it's an energy whether it's electromagnetic that's a question to you is it my electromagnetic coming out of my body okay well, okay well let's start with the beginning part so what when we talk about imagery that goes on in the mind the imagery in the mind communicates to the rest of the body somehow to go and release an energy field, uh, which is what you're describing as part two, uh, although there's probably a, a lots of steps in between <laughs> imagining something and manifesting it in the physical world. But we're proposing that the intermediate step is some kind of energy that you emit from your body, which I totally agree uh, that, by the way, that's called bioenergy, uh, can influence uh, the uh, physical object, or in this case, well, matter in general, in this case, water molecules. So the fact that you're able to be that specific in your imagery in your head means it has a very profound effect in the physical domain. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's important uh, to people to understand, but uh, the exact type of imagery that you use, I mean, imagery and imagination are, are, are now only being realized as powerful psychological to tools for health to mm -hmm. that we can use on our own bodies and produce and as I said they work with cancer people can cure themselves of cancer with their thoughts and with their mind so that's fascinating okay now the last part of your question was what kind of energy is it well there, <clears throat> there's surely electromagnetic energy coming from your body uh, and that's been measured uh, it's been measured uh, in terms of the uh, wavelength and the frequency so the the wavelength meaning that some of the ener electromagnetic energy is light and some of it is uh, lower frequencies uh, and in in the electromagnetic uh, form uh, uh, format uh, but there is also uh, other kinds of energies coming out of your body for after all we just talking about 
that the body is a quantum system. So you got all these um, subatomic particles zipping around and tunneling and, and traveling in, at the, faster than the speed of light uh, all around the body. Well, that generates what a, a quantum field. Mm. And that, of course, will resonate with the, uh, sub, the uh, quantum level of the water, as we talked about earlier. Mm. So the energetic transfer is complex. There are many different energies involved. And uh, according to you, what is the connection or what is the mechanism, you know, like I always ask the easiest questions, right? Uh, the connection between the consciousness, in other words, my intention, I said, I want to lower the pH. What just happened? Like I said that, but what is the connection between what I said and all this mechanism that you just described, the electromagnetism that's coming out of my body, um, maybe the heat or what have you. What is, in other words, how does, does consciousness and intention actually create those effects? Wow. Okay. Well, okay. So, so is that, uh, to answer that question, uh, this is not, you know, pre-rehearsed. You, you never know what's going to come out of her mouth, you guys. You have to realize, you know, <laughs> okay, there's a serious thing. Right. Right. But, but you know, I'm going to try to uh, uh, skirt around the question because we don't really know the answer uh, and and bring in traditional Chinese medicine and the concept of qi because the energy that's coming out of your body in China anyway is called external qi. Right. Mm -hmm. So they and and traditional Chinese medicine is a whole school that's all uh, evolved around the concept of qi and yin and yang and the you know fundamental concepts. But qi is one of those fundamental concepts. So external qi is a manifestation of internal qi. Now, so now you're asking the question: What's the relationship between consciousness and internal qi? Well, some people would say it's the same. Maybe consciousness is a more fundamental energy, which then activates the chi in your mm -hmm. body. The chi moves through the meridians. So then the question is, how does the chi energy in the meridian affect the physical body? Well, if a meridian is like a like a, a, a blood vessel, you got all this, in this case, energy traveling down these vessels, and then they get released at the end of the uh, during probably during during the time they travel and certainly at the end uh and they get released into the tissue so what now we're getting down to the level that you're asking so how can you if, it, if it's a nerve uh then you stimulate the nerve it's a muscle whatever uh and um but so that's what's happened inside the body but when you're projecting your chi outside the body the, the internal chi goes right out of your fingertips where the meridians end. Mm. So, and that's how the energy is literally coming out of your body to influence the water. Yeah, I know this is a very easy question to answer in two minutes. But, <laughs> but my theory also is that, uh, of course, you and I are talking about stuff that's not measured, that's difficult. You know, scientists don't even know how to approach this. But I feel that consciousness uh, has its own quantum properties and it behaves like a wave. And so as I am saying, as I'm sending my intention, it's my consciousness. It's not the physical mind. It's my consciousness that's saying, I want to change the pH. Those waves are now basically being emitted and they interact with uh, the physical brain, with the internal chi, if you want it, which then interacts with the out external chi. So it's kind of like, I feel it all starts at this quantum level of consciousness, you know, which you and I are gonna eventually discover someday how to measure. But, <laughs> Um, although, I, although I, am, I am working with some people, we're on to something very interesting. Um, but anyway, let's, let's move on to DNA. Okay. So what you just said, you reiterate, you reiterate it exactly. What I said, it starts at the quantum level, yeah. which is akin to consciousness, because consciousness is, even the scientists, a lot written on the quantum properties of consciousness. The consciousness uh, uh, energy wave 
then um, affects what I would say other kinds of energy fields and eventually works its way down to the electromagnetic and then yes. that then uh, resonates and, and affects the physical body. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Right. We're on the same page. So there yeah. Could be. Yeah, I want I want to measure that connection, which is impossible because it's on a with it's beyond our spectrum. But let's talk about DNA because obviously that was another thing that I was fascinated with that you have been working on. That uh, we are DNA. How speaking of structure, uh, it is a two strand DNA. But then when we the experiment that you and I did. Uh, we tried to change the electricity, the electrical conductivity going through that strand, that, that DNA. And then when we found a correlation, or you, you also had mentioned uh, a study where there was a correlation that when the electrical conductivity is higher, but it goes through the DNA and it's faster, this structure changes. Can you talk about that? Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Okay. So let, let's go back to... Uh quantum biology 101. So, so we're talking, now we're talking about a single molecule, not a cluster of molecules as mm -hmm. in the case of water. Now, of course, DNA exists throughout the body uh, and uh, we're focusing in on, uh, it's actually human DNA we use for the experiment, uh, which comes from the placenta. So it's, it's DNA from one particular organ and then it's purified so you get rid of all the other proteins and fats and sugars and chemicals that exist in the body and you got 99.9 .9 pure molecules of dna in the double strand uh existing floating around in the water so one of the, so the question so in the earlier experiments that i talked about with the winding and unwinding that's one of the things that you can measure with these little uh, duplexes, they're called, of DNA floating floating around in the water. But you can also measure the electrical conductivity of the entire solution, because as uh, electrons flow through the water from one electrode to the other, in between you got the water, which I had some diagrams here, uh, and th the energy flowing across and through the DNA is something that we can actually measure. Now, they, 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 there's a lot known about that, it, exactly how <clears throat> electrons propagate through the DNA molecule, what, particularly when they go down the central channel, the core of the, of the double helix down the center. It travels uh, faster than the speed of light. They've been able to measure that. They put a probe on one end and another probe at the other end and see how long the electron takes to go from from there to there and it's actually superluminal so that's a, another quantum property now in addition what as i said before the two strands are held together by a hydrogen bond so that itself is a, is a quantum property so you've got this quantum electrons and current flowing between these little quantum dots in, in water and that's what we're that's what we're measuring now it turns out that the <clears throat> the faster electrons flow through the DNA molecule, the better it heals itself. So they've done all these experiments with what's called self healing, and self healing means that when you damage the DNA, it repairs itself. Self repair. Self repair. So if you cut the strand, the two strands, and <clears throat> and this is actually what happens when you uh, listen to a cell phone, the radiation, the harmful radiation from the cell phone literally breaks one of the strands, but then the body heals itself and DNA, that self healing of DNA correlates directly with its ability to, to, uh, uh, tra transport electrons, uh, and which is the, uh, electrical conductivity, which is what we measure. And we, able, we were able to show that Caroline was able to increase the electrical conductivity, which means that her DNA is better able to repair itself and is better able to resonate with all the other DNA molecules. And that the hydrogen bonds are more efficient and the, and the energy flowing through is more efficient. 
So DNA is quite happy after receiving a treatment from Caroline. Did you go, and when you say Caroline, I think I'm just an example of something that anybody can do. So, you know, I don't want people to think like this is, you know, uh, and that's why I demonstrated it. And also what's fascinating about this experiment is how fast I could do it. I mean, literally like as soon as I looked at it, it was already like, like changed. And then I was like, I kept kind of waiting and then I'm like, it's done. It's already done. So it's within literally instantaneous. So, because so got, sorry, that's because it's working at the quantum level. Exactly. It's, it's even, uh, it's almost like, yeah, beyond it's faster than the speed of light. So you guys heard it that just by, we're going to show you the clip, but we've done this experiment many times. And this is the one, and you've done it too. This is the one that we did four years ago that as soon as I looked at it, it got zapped 400%. In this film, uh, you guys will see it. But you heard it. It's simply by focusing your intention on increasing the electrical conductivity. You don't have to know like how or the electrons are flowing or the hydrogen bond, like don't worry, we're talking a bit technical, but you don't have, without even knowing or worrying about any of this, if you just focus on your <laughs> DNA and intend for this electrical current properties to get speeded up, then spontaneously it will begin to restructure in this torus and self, self repair. But let, let's let's look at correct. I'm gonna show the I'm gonna show the the clip. Did I? You're looking up. Did I say something wrong? Okay, cool. You're in agreement. <laughs> okay, cool. Let, let me just uh, play that clip. This is fascinating, and I was blown away the myself the first time it worked so fast. It was amazing. Okay, hold on. Control number three. Yeah. 12.46. So the average is 12.9. 12.9 kilo ohms. So if you now are able to, with your consciousness, resonate with this and either get it to go up or down, then we'll be able to measure it. My intent was to increase the electrical conductivity. So I visualized that my mind was producing an electrical current in the DNA at a very high speed. Okay, so here is the magic number we're looking for. And it's way, way yeah. down to 6.5. Yeah. yeah, I felt like it responded very quickly and it was, wow. it's like I zapped it or something. So that's what I'm saying, yeah. 6.5. Let's, well, let's do it a couple of times and this is same sample 6.5 kilo zero. ohms five zero right the fact that there's such a huge difference so quickly it's almost like there's no question that something happened am i correct to say that yeah, absolutely <laughs> i mean right i mean right. like how could it jump from from 12 to, to six, six. Okay. I mean, and, now, and this one this is, is now again, the narrating 6.2 okay that's a large <laughs> a large robust effect demonstrating that at least your consciousness is able to resonate with and change the electrical properties of DNA. There you have it. And we did this experiment several times and every time I'm telling you, it just zaps it. It is so fast. It's incredible. I just want to add one thing, folks, because we're a little confusing. So what, what I actually measured was resistance. Yeah. Which, and the resistance goes down from 12 to 6, which is a twofold effect, which is very, very large. I have done these experiments with, with other, he, other people, with other healers. And uh, uh, this is a particularly large effect. Caroline has got very strong. But the point is that the resistance goes down, but resistance is the opposite of conductivity. So when the resistance goes down, the conductivity goes up. Yeah. 
Exactly. And also we did, you know, this is a just short clip and it's edited just for the sake of our conversation today. So, but in the film, we also show that we don't just throw an experiment like that. I mean, we take measurements over and over, over a period of time. We measure the uh, resistance over a period of time and also just before. So that's why you saw me write down the average. This is how we took three measurements just before and we had an average and the fluctuation is really, really small. It's like 12.8, 12.7, 12.9. So it's quite small. And that's why, when, so then when you focus, when I focus on it and it drops to six, you know, in that instant, that's how we know because we've been measuring at 12 point something for a while, for a long time. So I just want people to know that. And then also when it does drop to six, then we measure it again. We measure it three times, six, 6.5, 6. You know, again. So just for people to know, like how we do conduct an experiment and how it's done in a movie. Uh, so again, I get so excited when I, not just I do it myself. The first time it shot up 400 percent. I don't know if you remember. I remember because we were like, what? You <laughs> know, and um, and so I got very excited because. I am literally showing how easy it is. I mean, how easy it is to just focus your mind and just do it. Then the DNA will follow. It, it knows how to repair it, you know? I, I, I gotta say some people are, be, are better able to resonate their consciousness with the, with the DNA than others. Mm -hmm. I work with lots of different kinds of healers uh, and uh, Reiki healers are, are actually some of the best, uh, but it depends on, on you know, uh, on, on who uh, who you're working with, because there are good healers, strong healers, and there are weak healers. And this is one actual way to measure the, the, the strength of the energy coming out of her hands or out of her body. Uh, and uh, this uh, sort of is, a, is I mean, it needs more research, but but it may be this kind of a method uh, able to distinguish the the uh, efficacy of a particular healer working on a client. So it, that requires further research. Yeah, of course, uh, and everybody has their own technique, like we said earlier with the pH. Do you focus on the pH molecule, the hydrogen molecules, do you focus just on your intention? For example, in some energy, you know, healing people, they just put the hand and they just intend and it works. Uh, I'm particularly, the way I work is very, very specific. Like, it's like so specific, you know, and, and the way I develop my methodology, but it may be too much for some people. So, you, so everybody has to find what works for them to achieve that result and so and that's called bio, that's called biofeedback biofeedback and when you're working with a biological system to be able to know okay if i think of that or i think in this way then it changes if i yeah. do it that way it doesn't change and, and then go ahead sorry and so far uh, i mean it, it, another application of this research would be to actually give people that biofeedback but you have to uh, you need one of those uh, pieces of equipment and then you need the DNA. So it's a, you know, I haven't put anything like that in the market yet, but in theory, <laughs> it would be a great training tool for people to learn. Now I got, I got to say one more thing while we're on the subject, you know, Car I, so, so far we were talking about uh, healers doing this, people who are clearly gifted, but I got to tell you about my own personal experience here because I was in the lab once I had a, a, a healer coming, schedule the appointment everything and then at the last minute the healer didn't show up or couldn't show up so i'm stuck with all you know this experiment right there ready to rock and i said well okay i guess i'll just have to do it myself you know i'm not going to waste the whole uh you know effort to get to that point so i closed my eyes and i do meditate so i kind of just visualized my energy flowing out of my hands <clears throat> into the uh, test tube and resonating with the dna it wasn't even specific. Uh, and then when I actually measured it, sure, lo and behold, because I didn't really care which way it went. I just wanted to know whether I could influence the system at all. And sure enough, when I got when I got the results, there was a change. And 
I, I can't tell you folks how much that empowered me to realize, you know, that I could actually do that, that I had that power to do that. And that's something that I'm, tr that we're trying to say that yes, there are superhumans out there, but we're all superhumans. Yes. We can all do this to varying degrees. And if you want to train and, and, and learn how to be really good at it, it's like playing a piano, you know, yeah, anybody can play the piano. Anybody can play chopsticks, but you know, to play Mozart is it requires training. That's my point. I love it. I think you told me about that, that experience. And this is, you know, this is exactly the point of our discussion, how, you know, doing these experiments. Okay. I've been doing it like forever and ever, but many people um, can do it very easily and very quickly. And so they can be, they can approach it like you, like you were, you said, I just want to affect it. You weren't really attached and you weren't, and it worked, you know? And so, but people can, if they want to train, do something very technical, they can, but there's so many different ways. The idea is the bottom line is believe it. It works. I mean, here are the results. These are the experiments and that's what we're here to, to do. To, to tell you, to talk to you about. And so let's see if there are any questions, you know, for some reason, uh, oops. We've been chatting uh, for an hour and you guys know we can go on for hours like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go on for, for a very long time, but I think you got the jits of it. Like this is about uh, demonstrating that your thought has a measurable effect on water, which is we're made of water. Um, we did talk about, I love the connection between the structure, the chemistry, the quantum level, the molecular level, all of that works anyway through intention, whether you want to approach it this way or that way, but also on a DNA level. Okay, so uh, any questions for Glenn? Hi, Glenn, met you in France at, with Dan Winter. I know Dan. Uh, we're also friends, so good to see you here with me. Okay, that's not a question. If you have a question, please, uh, uh, for for Glenn, uh, this is the time. Don Hutchison, the Hutchison Effect has a video of, of him healing water after an oil spill with sound frequencies. If he can do that, then I believe the body can also heal this way too. So, so then what do you think about, I guess his question is or his comment is about healing water, not just on our stuff, on our body, but, you know, the lake or whatever, the water that we're drinking that's coming from who knows where, the spring water you mentioned. What do you think about that? Okay, so, so well, two things. Um, uh, the, the idea of using sound and uh, is great because sound is different than electromagnetic, but also heals, probably heals even better than electromagnetic energy because sound is, is so prim primordial primordial, I mean, prim uh, fundamental. Uh, and yes, absolutely. So it doesn't really matter whether it's electromagnetic energy, sound energy, light energy, or quantum energy, they all resonate with and can change the properties of water. So now the second part of the question is, well, if we can do it internally in ourselves and, and promote healing, can we project that energy like as in terms of external chi? Can we project it onto water and change the properties of water? Well, let me tell you about an experiment they did in Japan where they had a polluted lake and they, I don't remember how many people, at least six, maybe, maybe 10 people spread around the, the lake on the map or well, in person. Um, and they focused their intention, their healing energies onto the water. To, to heal the water, to purify the water. I don't remember, it was uh, exactly a long time ago. I don't remember exactly what their intention was. Uh, and they may not have even recorded that, but <clears throat> their intention was to make the, the water cleaner. And they actually measured the chemical levels of, of, of chemical toxins before and after treatment. And imagine that, but after treatment, they were lower. Uh, how how long did it take and how much lower do you remember? Yeah, I, don't remember I don't remember the details, but you know, they're, they're healers sitting around meditating, so they're not going to do it for more than an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. But even an hour, can you imagine cleaning up a whole lake in an hour? You know, I mean, that's, that's like 
pretty insane. Yeah. And so, and that's another thing that I found working with water is, is uh, we also took some time to decide which water to use for the experiments. Because we said, should we go with distilled water, which doesn't have all, you know, or should we go with spring water or bottled water, reverse osmosis water or structured water? We did test that, if you recall. We did throw an experiment. You probably, I don't know. And so, and and because every time I would focus, he's laughing because we did so many. Because uh, uh, so every time I would focus on a type of water, I would feel the chemicals that were in there, and I was like, oh wait, this one has so much stuff. It's, first, I need to take out all the garbage in there before I can work on it because it's harder for. Um, the electrical conductivity to be faster if there's stuff in there. It's almost like it's it's uh, taking up space. It's interfering with the flow of electricity. So that's the reason why the type of water that you choose to work with or that you choose to drink is extremely important. And reverse osmosis, for example, yes, it's great. You know, for very pure filtration, but not necessarily the only way um, to get rid of those those particles that are harmful for you. So there's people asking asking about this hexagonal structure. Uh, is there like I mean, without sounding like we're endorsing anything, but is there a product or a type of water that is better that's out there, or what do you recommend in terms of structured water having access to structured water? Well, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned the uh, Vivo, uh, but there's also uh, several other uh, structured waters out there. Uh, and then you could also buy a, um, a, a structuring unit. Uh, but if you buy one of those, buy, buy them from uh, 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 European companies, because the American companies uh, don't have that much science behind them. Uh, mm. uh, and, or, you know, or you could you could make your own structured water, but uh, it's not that easy. So you better buy a, a unit that you pour the water through or, or uh, commercial structured water. Okay. You're, you're European. Are you, uh, do you think of German or do you have any sense of uh, uh, a better location who, you know, who, country oh, that was able to master well, it? Just since I'm, I'm being specific and give you the names of specific companies, I might as well throw out crystal blue because okay. that's one of the better ones. Okay. Again, we're not like endorsing any, but we're just right. talking about do your own research, uh, but not because people advertise that it is structured water that it is, or it's, you know, so that's what the point that we're trying to make. So very, very cool. All right. Well, uh, let me see if there are any other questions. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This year has been a mess, but thanks to your film, I was able to carry on with the plan. I remember the New Year meditation. Okay, this is about the film, I guess. Um, and was introduced to quantum therapy, then woke up to pranic healing. And now it's seen. okay. So these, these people are just sharing that um, this information, our conversation, but also the movie. Yay, is having a very positive effect uh, on people, empowering people, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, the point of having this discussion and for people to watch directly on camera. You guys, also, this is not rehearsed. In other words, the cameras are rolling. I mean, how can you rehearse that? The cameras are rolling and I'm like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen and we measure it in real time and and it's in the can. I mean, like we don't have time to reshoot this a million times. Usually it's like from the first take and it is what it is. Of course, uh, the cameras are rolling for the entire time and then we edit it for the movie. But in other words, this is real. So I'm very excited. I think there may be a question, otherwise we can wrap this up. Uh, any theories on how does one system of water prioritizes the hierarchy which water supersedes the structuring of the other water. Like which water, does, oh, like because oh, remember we were talking about how if we drink pressured water, how, how the water in our body kind of, it supersedes what our, the water in our, I don't think. Yeah. Well, no, okay, I can answer that. Uh, that so first of all, uh, because it's like, 
what he's saying is the question is sorry which water decide like i mean is it the structure water that decides to supersede the other one or vice versa how does that work is what well yeah okay so so the answer to that is uh a physics phenomena uh, uh about information transfer and uh, you, we know for example you know that uh 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 well okay let me be specific so the the the, the more coherent the water uh then the information will go to the less coherent uh just like water it, you know it'll it'll flow from a, a more organized system to a less organized system so, I love it. and that's 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 the goal and but, but in order for that to happen the two systems have to resonate with each other of course but they're both water so they resonate with each other so that's the short answer so there's common denominators both being water but what you're saying the bottom line is coherence supersedes incoherence right and like higher forms of, of information inform lower forms of information and by higher and lower, it's about coherence. And, well, that's an example of a higher form, uh, but like uh, higher dimensional energies, if you want another example of higher energies, um, inform the, uh, lower dimensional energies and raise, the, it, and this is the whole purpose of in consciousness, it's higher forms of consciousness raise uh, the lower forms of consciousness. So they, they raise them up to their level because they're higher. So the other levels can, you know, your lower level can be brought up. I love it. This is amazing. Uh, Glenn, it's been such a pleasure. You and I can talk for hours and hours. You know that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there something you'd like to add or share that we haven't covered, um, you know, with DNA and water for people to take home with them or i think we've covered everything uh and uh it's a rabbit hole you guys so watch the tape again <laughs> yeah, that's right all right well thank you so much glenn i'll be talking to you later okay my pleasure thanks okay, everyone okay hey guys okay so you heard it uh i love this guy he's just like um so so important that's why i definitely had to have him in the first movie and in this movie the last movie and this movie because we're talking about stuff that uh is relevant every day we are water we are dna how can we not understand this these mechanisms i mean it just blows my mind that scientists aren't going there you know they know the mind exists they tell us um you know stress levels and everything else is affected by the mind but the connection between the mind and um our biological system the water and our dna is just like so important. So I'm hoping with this film, with these guests, with my scientist friends, uh, that it is helping you just, you know, giving you more and more and more information, more importantly, empowering you. Just try it. Hey, your mind is free, you know, like it doesn't hurt to just try. And if you want to just play with this, just go get it. Well, I have to say this, we used, um, you know, laboratory scientific equipment that's very, very precise. Um, but if you want to try, see if you can find something that's not, that's like commercial grade um, a pH meter or something like that. And you can just try and play with it. You know, of course, try to buy something that is extreme. I, I haven't found myself um, a pH meter, for example, that uh, that is so precise. I do have one that's like a little other than our scientific device that we used. Um, but, um, you know, you can still try. It's better than nothing. And you can start getting this feedback that Glenn was talking about. When you get that feedback like he did it is so empowering you feel like oh my god i i just did that well i'll do it again i'll do it again and so and as you know the ph and the dna just by doing this little exercise can change your life can heal you can literally heal you the dna repairs itself how much more uh do you want and he didn't mention all the studies that were done to demonstrate that this was not experiments that him and i had done it's it's other universities that have done this experiment okay anyway i hope you enjoyed this 
don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do follow us on the Facebook pages so that we can continue to uh, bring you all this information. It's free of charge. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to support you. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.